I think more than any other current actor, Abe Vigoda represents a, uh, a, a new breed, so to speak, where the older actor is seems to be uh, getting in more prominence. I guess in the other spectrum, George Burns is probably hotter now than he's ever been in his life. And you now, uh, well, since Barney Miller and, and Fish, uh, well, are really going full guns. Yes, well, it's nice to know that uh, you think of me as an older actor. No, not I, older. <laughs> <laughs> I, now, I, I really feel young. I'm, I'm a middle-aged man, not a, uh, and I jog two miles a day. Mm -hmm. I play handball very skillfully. I feel like I say about thirty, about thirty-two years old. What is so many? I couldn't picture you in the Sky Masterson role. I mean, maybe, maybe Nathan <laughs> Detroit. Maybe Nathan. Nathan Detroit. Detroit Nathan yeah. Detroit. Well, tell, these, yes. Let's t let's talk about your career. I for you've been acting almost all your life, obviously. I've been acting since I was the age of six. When the school teacher came into the room and said, "We're forming a drama class. What child would like, or which child would like to join the drama class?" We have only one role open: that of an old man. Uh, the name of the play was Candlelight, and he would be Baron von Rischenhofen. Now, let's see. Raise your hand who'd like to join. Raise your hands who would like to join uh, the drama class. Only one role open, children. And they all raised their hands, about 30, 40 children. And she looked around the room, and then she looked at me, and then she looked again at me and said, you look old, you'll do. <laughs> and I've been playing old men ever since. Yes. Well, certainly your Barney Miller as the sad-faced detective, that really was probably the high point, I guess, as far as your overall popularity, right? Yeah. Overall popularity, but it all started with The Godfather, Tessio and The Godfather. It yeah. was at that time when the film had come out, I had traveled across country with my wife by car, and we stopped at Cheyenne, Wyoming, in a small restaurant, and a cowboy came in with, slung over his back was a hyena. No, a coyote, not a hyena. <laughs> there was a difference. <laughs> there was a difference. And he had just come from the Rocky Mountains. He looked at me, and this was the first time I heard it. He looked at me and says, hey, what's a movie star doing out here in Cheyenne? It was the first time I'd heard that. Though I'd been on the stage for over 30 years. You've even done Shakespeare, yeah, right? Yeah, I've been on Broadway most of my life and regional uh, repertory theaters and so forth. Let me talk about some of the great people. You were in vaudeville also to a certain no, extent. Not vaudeville, well, no, but you no, worked no. with, with, uh, with Jimmy Durante. Yes, on the Four Star Review, which was live television at NBC TV in New York at the Center Theater, 49th Street and 6th Avenue, which is now a bank. This you're is what happened. You're certainly not suffering <laughs> from any senility as far as memory is concerned. Oh, no. I remember all the lines, all the plays I did. I remember all the dialogues and everything I've done. Each role has a, a specific and a warm feeling for me in my heart. Did you ever play uh, anything other than older men? I mean, real romantic, leading men types? Well, they ask me to do it now. Really? <laughs> uh, yes, they do. They, okay. They've asked me to play uh, young, leading men. I just was a lover on them, one of the... Which television. play was that? I missed that one. I well, think. let's see. Uh, well, this was a television show called uh, uh, Love Boat, where in which I made love. I was a lover. Wonderful. Uh, that you know, I, I, no, they, they, they're offering me roles that younger men usually do. They see me as the young man that I am that, in my heart. That must make you feel good. And that only makes me feel good. It, uh, <laughs> it's exhilarating. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. The thing, when I talked before that you are... Uh, uh, sort of a prime example of, of a man who's in his, his middle years. How, well, let's use that term, middle yeah, years. Middle and years. who's all of a sudden his career is blossoming. You were just telling me earlier that right now the offers are coming in. Tell us about some of the things that are coming in. Well, uh, Universal has just signed me to a contract in which at this very moment they are developing a new pilot for a projected new series for me. This will not be a detective. Mm -hmm. This will be a monk. I will portray a head monk in a monastery. <laughs> This is, good. Uh, this is a sitcom, a half-hour sitcom, and it's being developed right at this very moment. Isn't that one? Yes. And, and what else? Well, I've just received a firm offer, and I'm very flattered, uh, Frank. Uh, Josh Logan, the famed director, has asked me if I would star in his new Broadway play that he would like to direct this fall on Broadway. Eve, I've got to ask you about, as you mentioned before, the first time you realized you were, quote, a movie star is when this guy stopped and remembered you as Tessio in The Godfather. Yes. Tell us about, obviously, that film uh, was a monumental film in, in Hollywood history. What about Marlon Brando? I mean, working with him, what kind of, we hear all kinds of stories about that. Well, he's a fine, wonderful, is, great Was actor. he temperamental? No, 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 he was a lot of fun and he's a wonderful person and a wonderful actor to work with. 
as an actor and working with him was very productive, creative, and spontaneous. Yeah. Everything we did. And that's one of the reasons why the film uh, was so yeah. marvelous, because it was real and uh, it was happening at the moment. There were times I thought I was a mafia leader because they would pick me up with a limousine. I, I, I've been a stage actor all of my life. They don't pick you up with limousines when you're a stage actor. And since I had one of the major roles in the film of Tessio, in the morning uh, there would be a limousine waiting for me in front of my house. And my elevator man would say, there's a, a limousine waiting for you, Mr. Pagoda. And I said, for me, no, I, I'm going to Staten Island by subway. <laughs> I don't know about that kind of thing. He says, no, they're waiting. And there I was in a limousine with a, sh a uniformed chauffeur, and I felt I was a mafia leader at that time. Now this, you're in now your first musical comedy. You've never played musical comedy. Was it just because, hey, it's, I haven't done that before. I yeah. want to give that a shot. Is that why you chose to do this? Well, I chose to do Guys and Dolls for, for one or two reasons. They are, A, I had never seen Guys and Dolls on the stage nor the film. But I'd heard so much about this wonderful musical. And when my agent called me and they said they would like you to do Nathan Detroit in Guys and Dolls, I felt this would be a challenge because it would be an original. In other words, I would be creating it for the first time from the, uh, from the script itself, mm -hmm. not having seen the show at all. And this is, to me, mm -hmm. a joy to do, to develop a script that has about, been done before. How about singing? Now, you have a couple of numbers you sing in, in the show. Yeah, oh, yes, I sing one, uh, Sue Me. I, I'm in love with this uh, beautiful girl. Was this hard for you to do? Well, I'm adjusting to it, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, some people, the, the orchestra, lead, the conductor said, you know, you're, you ought to do uh, Zorba the Greek or Fiddler on the Roof. You sing. So I looked at him, and I said, thank you. So I guess I sing.